What's going on guys, David Fala here. Welcome to another tutorial, to another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing, what are we gonna be doing? Low skin fade. We're gonna be doing like low skin fade. The top, we're gonna cut it just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, he likes the length. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a low skin fade. We're gonna maintain some of this weight. We're gonna actually blend the top into the side using scissors as well, just to create that texture. He likes a lot of texture on top. He has a big cowlick on the back, so we gotta take care of that. Make sure that we maintain that shape so the, the hair doesn't spike up everywhere. And that and we're gonna give it texture on the front as well so he can actually slick it back and it's not like on his face actually stays up. So let's go ahead and start. So the first thing we're going to do, we're gonna wet the top. Uh kinda wanna let you guys know that uh you know what, I have, I've been watching a lot of my old videos and I, I like certain things that I used to do back in the day with the videos. I also like things that I do now. So what I'm gonna do with this video, I'm gonna kinda combine some of those two things and you guys let me know what you think. If you like this, uh, the way I'm gonna do this video better, then I will continue doing my tutorials from now on like this. So let's go ahead and start. Step one is going to be to cut our perimeter. You can use blood graduation for this. You can use your scissors. You can use your your guards. I will use like a, maybe a four to an eight, depending how 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 long to ensure you want this this section. Or you can use clipper over comb. Whatever makes it easier for you. Here we're going to cut the top. And what we're going to do, we're going to divide the top into three sections. Uh, the, the middle section is going to be our first guide. Kind of think about it like a mohawk. You're creating a mohawk on top and uh, right in the middle, that's going to be our guide. In this case, we're not going to cut the top too short. We're just going to cut a little bit. Why? Because the client only wants a little bit to be cut, not too much. So it's important for us to listen to our clients one. Um, now what I'm doing, I'm taking a, another vertical section, I'm bringing it back to my previous section, make sure I can see my guide, and then I'm cutting. Uh, in this case, my client's hair like spikes up like crazy because it's very straight, so if you cut it too short, it's going to spike up everywhere, and that's not what the client wants. He wants to have full control of his hair, so we need that extra length, that extra weight, so, so the hair can do what the client wants without having to blow dry too much or having to do much to it, so it's important that we listen to our clients and this is why it's very important that we pay attention during our consultation because our clients will tell us exactly what they what they don't want usually that's what you gotta you can hear what they don't want and like that you know exactly what to give them step three we're going to blow dry the hair uh, we're gonna just dry it so we can do our fading part and we're just gonna dry it in the direction that we want the hair to go just to make it easier for us to see what we created on top and if there's any inconsistencies then it's gonna be easier for us to see it. For this step we're going to use a number four with the lever down and the number four is going to connect with the guy that we created on the sides on step one uh, reason for it is because uh, my fingers are are pretty much a number three, number four. So if we create a first section pulling from the head, and my head, my fingers are touching the, the the head, then that means that will be uh, between a three and a four. So we, we use a four is going to connect obviously. So here I close the lever and I'll continue just clean clean the canvas just to make sure that everything is a number four on the sides. For this step, we're going to create a, the skin line. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, close our lever on our, on the. in this case, I'm using the masters. So we're going to close that lever and our first guideline for the low fade is going to follow the, the hairline. So this is going to be a low fade because it's very low. How you can see that's I'm starting my first guy very low. So just keep that in mind, depending on if you're trying to do a mid fade or a high fade or a low fade, that's where you place your guy. Step six, uh, we're gonna use a shaver just to bolt out everything under uh, the guide that we created. So how you can you can see it clearly where the where the guide is, and then we can you can see that I'm bolting out everything underneath that just to make sure that you keep a little space between that guide that you created and what you're doing right now with your shaver. Because if you go too high or you go into that guide, then you're gonna have to raise your fade. So in this case, we're trying to keep the fade as low as possible.
for this step we're going to create another guide using a lever open no attachments just a machine with the lever open and this guide is going to be around i would say half an inch to an inch depends on the uh, how big the profile of the client is so in this case we can do half an inch because we're trying to keep the fade lower So here's when we're going to start connecting everything. So pretty much what I'm going to do, I'm going to start down fading. Down fading means that we start from the highest to the lowest. So remember, we did number four first, right? And then now we're going to do a three. And then we always start with the lever open and then we close the lever little by little. And then until it's fully closed and once it's fully closed and it's not cutting anymore, then we're going to switch to the next guard. So in that case, will be a number two. If you have a one and a half, then you use the one and a half. If not, then you use the one. In this case, this clipper doesn't, I would say that you don't need the one and a half uh, to be honest with you. So then in that, in that case, I'm going to jump the one and a half. I'm going to use from a two. I'm going to go to a one, but it's the same process. Just to start with a lever open and then close the lever when it's not cutting anymore. Then you, you switch cards. Here I'm using the zero or the 116. And when you get to the lower guards, uh, I would recommend you to start using more of the corners of the clipper, just because you wanna have more control of what you're doing. How you can see in this case, for example, my client, my client has a lot of bones that you can see, a lot of indents and things like that. So because of it, you gotta be very careful to light up those areas that are darker, but be careful with the other areas. So the, the density of the hair is a little bit different here too. The direction of the hair, how you can see, it grows in different directions. So there's a lot of things you gotta pay attention to. So you just gotta be careful. And because of that, I'll use a little bit more of like the corner. So I have more control on exactly what I'm doing. And here we are um, at the end of what uh, pretty much the, the fade. So now we're just fading the skin line. And then pretty much what you do, you start with the lever open. Then you close the lever little by little. In this case, this clipper has little notches on the side. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to, to follow the steps. So you start with the uh, notch number five or four or three. Some have, you know, each machine has different, different uh, numbers. So, you know, like you close the notches little by little. So like that, you keep yourself organized until you all the way close. And then all you do after that is just kind of play with the lever, open it, uh, closing it, uh, be sure that you look in the mirror, you see what looks darker, and then you light it up uh, using, uh, you know, the clipper with the lever open or close, or you put back the one and a half or the one, whatever, whatever works, whatever you can see that needs to be done. Then at that point it's, it's on you to to really play with that with that lever to make sure that uh, that the fade looks uh, as nice as you want it to be step nine uh, we're going to use our shears or scissors depending on where you are in the world and to uh, shear over comb the side just to make it a little bit softer because um we're gonna make that transition using scissors, right? We want it to start with a nice low fade and then it transition with scissors so it has a little bit more movement and then it con that connects with the top that has a lot of movement and we're gonna add a lot of texture to it. So for example, when you have a fade and you want it to look nice with the top, remember the machine creates a different texture than the scissors. So you wanna create a little bit of that transition um, using scissors because you want the, the shears to create that movement, that texture. Uh, on the sides, so it had so it's a nice transition. In this case, I'm also using uh, blending shears. Blending shears have a lot of teeth, like way more teeth than like uh, texturizing shears or anything like that. So, um, if you are trying to use this type of uh, shears, then I would recommend you to get some uh, blending shears because it will help you blend, how you can see. And uh, how you can see, I'm just looking here at the dark spots where the bones are and then trying to uh, make them a little bit lighter 
because honestly, like sometimes you, you can do it, sometimes you can't, depends on, on, on the client. So here, this is a technique I did not want to show on YouTube because I didn't want you guys to start cutting the client or making, making a hole in the haircut, but just be very careful. This is one technique that I will use if I need to light up um, like a dark spot, you know, using scissors. So that's that will be a, a one technique. Just be very careful, please, people. Be very careful. For this step, we're going to create the, the shape up on the sideburn. Uh, we're going to be very natural with this. We don't need to create any any crazy, sharp, super sharp shape up just because that's not the main focus of this haircut. This haircut is going to be all about the top and how it flows and how it looks. So that's what we're going to be our main focus. So for this step, we're going to create texture on the top and we're going to use different techniques. In this case, I'm going to start on the back. I'm going to kind of start more with a deep point cutting technique just to remove some bulk and also to create movement and we're making sure that we don't destroy the structure we create at the beginning, the shape, the square shape we created. You're going to be very careful with this. This is why I prefer doing it with thinning shears or anything like that, just because I have no control with this type of uh, technique. I do have control of what I'm doing. So on the front, I'm going to use a technique that I have no idea what the name of it is, but what it does is kind of create, it kind of creates some short hairs that make the longer hairs kind of move up. And that's exactly what we want with the front. We want the front to have a lot of volume and to stay kind of higher. So that's, that's why I'm using the technique here i'm just removing bulk on the sides because the sides are very long and the fade is very short so it's going to be a little bit darker so what we want we want to remove a little bit of that bulk one so it has movement two so it's a little bit lighter that transition that's that's all okay now we're going to use a razor i already apply a hot towel and put a little bit of shaving gel and then we're just using the, the razor just letting it glide I don't have to put a lot of pressure at all because that's a, that's not uh, that razors are super sharp, so you don't necessarily need to put a lot of pressure. Same thing with the neck. Make sure you put a little bit of product on the neck, like a shaving gel or foam or something like that. And if you have hot towels, even better. The clients love it, and it makes it super easy to shave after. For the last step, we're going to uh, just add some product. As you can see, I start with I start on the back first because I want the back to be a little bit heavier than the front. We want the front to have uh, more volume, so we put the product on the back first, and then uh, we put the remaining on the front. Then it's gonna have more weight on the back. And that's it, guys. That's the video. Uh, I think it looks great. This haircut is not easy to do uh, because the client has, uh, you know, his hair is not easy to cut. He has a lot of different uh, growth patterns, densities, like uh, you can see the, the bones, you know, like it's not an easy haircut, but I think it came out really good. I'm very happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. And don't forget to subscribe and like it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.